now. Every year, malaria kills more than 600,000 people, and most of those are children. That's according to the World Health Organization. But just as the WHO is marking World Malaria Day, a new vaccine is raising hopes that the, di the disease could one day be fully eradicated. Now, nearly half the world's population is at risk of contracting malaria, but 96% of malaria deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa. The new R21 vaccine, produced by Oxford University in the UK, is still in the final stage of trials, but Ghana and Nigeria have already given it provisional approval. It joins an existing vaccine that has helped save lives, but trials suggest that this new vaccine is way more effective. DW's Isaac Kaledzi reports now from Ghana. Kit Educhumwa has brought her son to this hospital to get his next dose of an anti-malaria vaccine. Kit is happy her son has access to this protection. She has gotten malaria once. Okay. It's not all that serious okay. because of the vaccine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you so the vaccine is very good okay. for, I mean, to start the vaccine early. It's very good for the children. Okay. Yeah, it helps them to prevent them from the getting malaria. Okay. He's one of the lucky kids getting the RTSS vaccine, which was approved by the World Health Organization. It's available for children in over 90 communities following a successful pilot project in 2019. We've started using vaccines long ago and to date we've not had issues when it comes to the use of vaccines and this is one of them. I encourage every mother to come, the vaccine is safe. It's part of the vaccines that we have been using already. So this is an addition to come and help us immunize the children to gain immunity against diseases. Ghana has taken a leading role in the fight against malaria. In addition to RTSS, the Food and Drugs Authority recently also approved the new R21 Oxford vaccine, becoming the first in Africa to do so. The vaccine is still in trial, so Ghanaians will have to wait before they can benefit from its expected high rates of protection. Health activists say, despite these new tools, the roots of the problem, like stagnant water, where malaria-bearing mosquitoes breed, also need tackling. We have IRS, that is indoor residual spray. And before we have ITN, that is a, a bed net, a mosquito bed net. So we cannot use only one method to say that we are eradicating uh, uh, malaria or mosquitoes. But we need to uh, harmonize the whole uh, 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 various tools that we have. This year, the World Health Organization is pushing for zero malaria cases across the world. New vaccines will be key in achieving this. These parents in Ghana are already seeing the benefits they can bring in protecting the lives of their children. And for more, we can speak to Bart Knolls. He's a vector biologist and author, and his research focuses on mosquitoes and the diseases they transmit. And he's joining us today from Bali, Indonesia. Welcome to DW, Bart. Um, I know that you lived and worked Thank in you. East and Southern Africa for 11 years. Could you put the, quite frankly, shocking number of deaths from malaria in that region into perspective for us? What did you experience during your time there? Oh, it's 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 absolutely tragic. I mean, there's there's no two ways about it. I think the world, the world has experienced COVID, so we've learned a lesson. But that lesson has been there always in sub-Saharan Africa when we talk about malaria. I mean, the impact of that disease alone has been devastating. Has really stopped the continent from progressing significantly. And I think with the new tools that we're getting, including the new vaccines that are there. Uh, I hope that finally this is going to change and that the, the continent is going to pick up with the rest of the world. You've made very clear there that a disease doesn't only affect individuals, it affects society, the development of a whole country. So, so is your feeling um, about this new vaccine that it, it, it could be truly transformative? There is, there is so much bad news these days. And fortunately, this is indeed very good news for the last 
last seven years, we've pretty much been stagnant. We've not made any significant more gains in terms of reducing the number of cases and the number of deaths due to malaria. But with these new vaccines, the RTSS vaccine that was just mentioned, but particularly the R21 vaccine, which indeed is a lot more effective, gives a lot more protection to the children that get these vaccines. Um, there is real hope that we can significantly start reducing the number of deaths due to the disease. And once you start doing that, once you get a healthier society, you're going to experience that instantly families are going to reduce in, in size. You're going to get fewer children in families. The fewer children that are there, you're going to get better education. The better education means better workers, means better income. So the, the whole of society is going to transform once you introduce a vaccine against malaria that is truly effective. I did want to ask you, obviously, a variety of factors lead to outbreaks of malaria, including poor sanitary conditions, for example. So simply vaccinating more people, will this help to potentially completely eradicate this disease? I would, I would say at this stage that we will need a package. We will need an integrated package of a variety of tools in order to try and bring down malaria to zero and keep it there. There is not a single place in Africa where we have succeeded in doing this so far. We have done in other parts of the world, but in Sub-Saharan Africa, it's particularly difficult. But the combination of the tools, the use of a proper vaccine with the use of a new generation of bat nets that have just been released by WHO, two new bat nets are on the market, including the indoor residual spraying that was mentioned, and having proper diagnostic tools in place and drugs that are still effective. Once you have an integrated package, once you have a full toolbox, you can really have a go at this disease and try and see if in different parts of the continents you can start um, you know, eliminating it and eventually, hopefully, eradicating it. But, I mean, that does sound incredibly um, hopeful. But, of course, there's another factor, isn't there? There's people's attitudes towards vaccines. Um, how do people in the areas that are most effective, how, are they open to being and their children being vaccinated? Research, research has shown so far that there is a, a very good receptivity towards a new vaccine. The impact of this disease has been so dramatic for decades and decades and decades that people are really longing for something that they can use to target this disease, to tackle this disease. It is clear, the facts are on the table. For every dollar that we invest in rolling out something against malaria, we will have a return of $6 coming back to us. So it is totally feasible investing large sums of money in doing this activity by having proper community engagement, community awareness of these new vaccines, we can get a lot of people to adopt this vaccine for their children. And in doing so, once people start to see that mortality, child mortality is going down, I think the acceptance of it will just progress more and more and more. And eventually we can really start hammering down this terrible disease. Let me finish with this question. We're looking to the future. Are you confident that the world will get rid of malaria? If you go online and you look at all the big players, the WHO, the Global Fund, the Gates Foundation, lots of these organizations, they all claim on their websites that by 2030 or 2040 latest, the world will be free of malaria. I think that is, in my view, overly optimistic. I think it's going to take longer than that. There are places that are really hard to have access to. If we're talking about places where there is civil unrest, when there is civil war, when there is dense jungles, where it's just hard to get to people to vaccinate them or do malaria control, it's going to take time. But once we start getting our gains into place, once we nibble on the Sahel zone in the north, once we nibble from the south in Botswana and Namibia, we get rid of malaria there, I think the world will become more confident, more enthusiastic, and donor money will be poured into getting rid of this, this ancient scourge. Bart Knolls, a vector biologist and malaria specialist. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. And I'm so pleased to welcome Yatboam, regional representative for the Epicenter Africa. It's the research arm of Doctors Without Borders. He joins us now from Yaoundé in Cameroon. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Can I ask you first how significant of a development this new vaccine could be in preventing the spread of malaria? Yes, 
Thanks for hosting me. Maybe a small correction. I'm still with Epicent in the board, but I'm currently the director of the Institut Pasteur in Bangui, which is just nearby Cameroon. Our apologies. So the, Thank the you for clarifying. No, 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 no problem. So the vaccine is a great, great hope. And as you've, as you've mentioned, there are some countries that, based on the preliminary result, are already pushing to roll it out. Other countries, like Central African Republic, Cameroon, and many others are also currently pushing Gavi, which is a global alliance for vaccine initiative, so that they can be in a good position to receive those vaccines. Why? Because it's going to bring a tremendous change and impact in protecting children, especially. Now, more than 600,000 people die every year from malaria, as we've pointed out, um, most of them in Africa. Do you think this vaccine could really work toward achieving the goal of zero malaria in the region? Yes, you've mentioned it. Africa has more than 95% of the death of malaria. So the vaccine... It's critical, but it is not the silver bullet. We still need to invest, to innovate, and to implement what has been working. The most mosquito bed net, for example, every single child in Africa must be sleeping under the bed nest. We also have to make sure that the community is engaged so that they have adequate diagnostics for malaria within one hour. This is what has been launched today by the president of, uh, of, of CAR with uh, an important community engagement where the community is really key. That's how we manage to get to the zero malaria. So in addition to things like mosquito nets and community engagement, are there other measures that are also necessary toward combating malaria, even in conjunction with a promising new vaccine? Definitely. The, one of the most critical, critical things is the, the diagnostics. Uh, children and population, I mentioned children because they're the most vulnerable, the children and the pregnant women, they must have the opportunity to get tested whenever they have fever within one hour and to have access. So we need to keep on working on research to make sure that we have the most performant test whether it is rapid test that you are using, but also some non-invasive, where you can have the result without actually pricking the, the patient. So that's critical. We need more diagnostics. We need more treatment that has to be nearby the children and, and the family. And then the vaccine will come on top of that mm -hmm. to bring us close to the zero malaria. And I want to come back to something you mentioned earlier. Do you have a sense already of what the production and distribution of this vaccine would look like or should look like in Africa? I mean, how it should, it should look like, we must take advantage of what happened at the end of COVID. You have a couple of countries, Senegal with the Institute Pasteur of Dakar, we have South Africa, you have Tunisia. All those countries have shown interest on building on the local production of vaccine. I think we should really take advantage. Malaria is a huge challenge. You know, for the other vaccine, 98% of the other vaccine are, co are imported in Africa. This has to change. I think malaria is an opportunity, which we've not managed with COVID, but this is an opportunity to have the vaccine produced locally for the a disease that is an African disease, we, we talk about 94, 95% of the deaths happening in the continent. So we need to have that autonomy. We need to have that independence and being in a position to produce locally those vaccines and even also the test for the diagnostic. Yeah, Boom, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. Pleasure.